And I'm afraid, well, there is information from Russia that uh, the way out of it, or, or especially from the sanctions regime, can be that they will raise the, the, the stakes and uh, will even attack NATO just to uh, force the Western world to lift sanctions under the threat of a major war. Diplomatic talks are once again underway between Russia and Ukraine, with the Ukrainian government sounding more optimistic and suggesting Moscow has been more constructive. Meanwhile, though, there are reports that the Russian government has been asking the Chinese government for weapons. Volodymyr Yermolenko is a Ukrainian philosopher and journalist and chief editor of Ukraine World, a site explaining Ukrainian politics and society in English. Very helpful indeed during these times. Thank you very much, uh, Volodymyr. Um, Volodymyr is in Kyiv and he's talking to me now. Um, a spokesman for the Ukrainian president's office has hinted at progress in peace talks, saying Ukraine is pushing for an immediate ceasefire. We've seen several attempts at peace talks fall through, though. Um, is there a hope that it might be different this time? Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Well, it's difficult, difficult question because Russian demands are very, you know, very, very high. And... Uh, you you see what destruction they have done to Ukraine, uh, what uh, what uh, war crimes they have done to Ukraine. Uh, in only in Mariupol, a besieged city in in the southern Ukraine, there are over two thousand deaths already. Uh, there are about one hundred children who are dead. There are huge destructions in 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 different cities in Chernihiv, in Sumy, in in Mariupol. So what are the conditions for these peace talks? So Ukraine, of course, says that uh, Russian troops sh should withdraw fully, but we know Russians, I mean, uh, they, they have always uh, broken uh, their, their agreements. Uh, will they withdraw all the troops uh, now? Of course, they're in a very difficult situation, actually, and therefore probably they try to be constructive, but I'm a bit skeptical about these talks, frankly. Indeed, but I, I wonder, I mean, there was a report, I don't know if you heard it just then in the in the news about President Putin saying that he'd said from the beginning to refrain from attacking civilian areas. Uh, obviously, we know that's, that's not true or necessarily true, but, but it does suggest that he's, or does it suggest that he, he's getting a little bit worried about the perception of what's happened during this war? Well, he's obviously worried because <clears throat> he's living in a, in a his fantastic world and uh, we see Russia is basically a country which is uh, committing war crimes just because it is uh, first committed a crime against truth, uh, because Putin has invented these walls uh, in which Ukrainians are not, is not a real nation. And, and he was thinking that Ukrainians will greet Russians with, with flowers, which is not the case. Ukrainians are incredibly resisting. Look even on cities who are under Russian occupation, like Kherson, Militopol, Berdyansk, unarmed people go massively on protests against this this cruel russian army and when putin is say, is saying that he is not bombing civilians look at kharkiv for example where dozens of buildings have been destroyed by airstrikes of or missiles look at chernihiv right now look at sume look at mariupol which which turned into a huge disaster and they're really erasing the cities with their airstrikes and missiles so we have to understand that Russians are, are always lying. This regime and the, the millions of people who are supporting it are lying. What's your sense? I mean, I look every day with a, a knot of dread in my stomach, which is kind of crazy because I'm obviously at a very far remove from what's happening there. But uh, of the, 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 the there's a map that marks in in the Times that marks in on the Times website that marks in red the Russian advances, and it seems to get bigger every day but what's your sense of of how the the war is going and is it just incredibly important for ukrainians to to maintain their spirit and their determination that the russians aren't going to win this war despite perhaps um you know the encroachment that that seems to be getting larger every day look it's not getting larger every day so the Russian advances are stalled on, on, on many, many different directions. Putin understands that because he wanted to capture Kyiv in 72 hours, and, and we are now approaching three weeks of the war. The only major city they took so far is Kherson, and even in Kherson there are demonstrations of unarmed people, thousands and dozens of thousands of people going on the streets against Putin. 
Uh, he's not taking Sumy, he's not taking Chernihiv, uh, he's not taking Kiev, he can't even encircle it. Uh, so he's basically failing. And uh, Ukrainians are very smart because uh, we don't have so much resources, but resources should be used very, very smartly. Therefore, Ukrainians are doing very targeted strikes on uh, Russian supply chains, primarily on Russian command, uh, command points. And uh, this is this is what put Russians in a in a deadlock, and and therefore they're, they're trying probably to seek a way out of it. And I'm afraid. Well, there is information from Russia that uh, the way out of it, or, uh, especially from the sanctions regime, can be that they will raise the the, the stakes, and uh, will even attack NATO just to uh, force the Western world to lift sanctions under the threat of a major war. It's extraordinary that that, that that would seem like a solution to their problems to pull NATO into it. Yet there was a Russian airstrike yesterday on a, on a military base in the west of Ukraine and really not far from the Polish border. Do you really think that, 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 that inciting NATO would be the next move? It can be because they understand that they are losing the war on the ground and especially they are losing the economic war. So these Western sanctions are very painful. We see hundreds of companies leaving Russia. We see the sanctions against Sberbank and against Russian uh, reserves, which are really weakening Russian economies. So the paradox is that Russia tried to reestablish its empire and, uh, you know, do like a wounded empire, like many other empires did in the 20th century, for example. And therefore, we can compare today's Russia with Hitler's Germany or with Mussolini's Italy. But uh, it will increasingly turn into a colony, into probably Chinese colony, the China who will enter the Russian economy and just buy the assets left by, by the West. Uh, so they will obviously try to, to save themselves. And, and one of the possible solutions is that they raise the stakes and uh, because they need to get rid of these sanctions, otherwise they will not survive. So how, how they will get rid of the sanctions? The only thing is to attack the enemy. And for them, the enemy is NATO and Western world. Yeah, there are, um, you know, reports today, analysts saying that the Russian government could default on its debts this week, which would obviously be a, a, a real, crisis and also the reports that they're asking the Chinese for weapons suggest they're perhaps feeling a, a, a bit vulnerable. But how does Vladimir Putin get out of this and keep face? I have no idea, actually. And uh, this is the problem because uh, he was thinking that it will be an easy thing. He was thinking that it will be a repeat of occupation of Crimea. It's not appearing this way. Ukrainians are resisting. And what is more important, the spirit of the nation is very high. So people are really, uh, even if he's occupying some of the cities, people are not going to, uh, to uh, you know, to accept leave it. under Putin's, accept it. And uh, what they will do, they will need, they will need uh, probably several hundreds of thousands of police officers, police soldiers, uh, maybe million to move to Ukraine and to control Ukraine under condition that Ukrainian army is defeated. But Ukrainian army is still very strong. There are uh, so many uh, reserves that it has. And uh, basically, it is comparable with Russian occupation army right now. We know from the military logic that you have, uh, you have to have an army which is three times higher, three times bigger when you attack. This is not the case. And Ukrainians are having less losses than the Russians and are attacking very smartly. So, I mean, what's your what's your sense of, of what happens next? Uh, you know, you, you refute the idea that the Russians could win. Is it just unimaginable to a Ukrainian? It's unimaginable because, uh, as, as, as I said, um, Ukrainian army is very, has a very good spirit and uh, supplies of Western weapons were very helpful because right now, a, a soldier with an anti-tank missile is a real threat for a Russian tank. And we see lots of Russian vehicles destroyed, for example. So uh, it's, it's very important to, to support Ukraine uh, because Ukrainians are, are also not interested at all in, in a major war, in, in bringing NATO, 
in, into this war in, in a World War Three. Uh, Russia should be stopped now and you, uh, here and Ukrainians are capable of doing that. So they need uh, the biggest support possible. One of the scenarios, of course, is that all the sanctions and, uh, and the military defeat in Ukraine, which is possible, which, for example, Soviet Union has suffered in Afghanistan, and then it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. This should be the goal. Uh, unfortunately, Ukrainians are paying a, an incredible price right now for this.